Thanks. Bueno, they're not ready yet. Okay. Um, is it this jacket is changing? Um, second um, time. Um, Good morning. Uh, well, in my time zone it's morning. I uh, came in this morning from the Netherlands and I'm going to talk uh, about SL Linux. Uh, so, who am I? I'm an uh, author, technical trainer and consultant. Uh, I like to see myself as someone trying to understand SL Linux. Uh, one day a couple ago I met Dan Walsh. Dan Walsh is with Red Hat and he is the guy behind SL Linux. And wow, did I feel dumb. Um, so, I've been working with SL Linux for a couple of years now, and hey, I'm doing better and better. And uh, it's so good that I'm even trying to explain it to you during this session. Uh, everything I say during this session, you can also read it in uh, an article that I've just finished. Uh, first draft is on my website. Take uh, the link uh, from the slide if you're interested. It's on the website right now, so if you need details, uh, more detail than I can give in 20 minutes, you can get it off the website. Uh, who's listening? That's also important, uh, especially when you're talking about SL Linux, uh, because there are different levels of talking about SL Linux. You can go very deep. Uh, it's not my intention to go very deep. It's my intention to talk to sysadmins uh, that normally would just switch off SL Linux. I see that too often. Uh, they start working on like a Red Hat box and they try to install something like a Samba server and they try to share a directory and they don't know how to deal with SL Linux and hey Samba is not working and if I disable SL Linux Samba is working so let's get rid of it completely. Uh, so the idea of this talk is that after this talk there's no reason to turn off SL Linux anymore. Uh, even better, uh, you can go get uh, any other distribution uh, and start configuring SL Linux for yourself on that distribution. Uh, that is what I've done. Uh, I've configured SL Linux uh, in particular on different versions of SUSE, and that works. Uh, so, before going into details, why do you need SL Linux? Uh, well, simply said, it's, offer, it's, it's offering good security. Uh, just one example, how are you going to ensure that the web server that's running hundreds of scripts is really secure? I mean, which system administrator really knows what's going on uh, in all the scripts uh, that are offered on the web server? Uh, and if you just have one badly configured script, uh, an intruder can just 
uh, break through the script, uh, get shell access. Uh, and he doesn't even need uh, shell access as a root account. Shell access with the web server account uh, is bad enough, bad enough under bad circumstances uh, to put scripts in some directories and to start bothering the rest of the world. Uh, and this is something that's very difficult to avoid uh, given the, the, the basic solutions that Linux is offering. Because on Linux there are a couple of directories where every user can create files. And hey, how are you going to prevent that? Do you really want to take away uh, write permission from the TMP directory and the var TMP directory? I don't think so because it's useful to have those permissions in those directories. And that is where SL Linux is going to help. So the purpose of SL Linux, SL Linux is very effective. Uh, it basically blocks all syscalls. Which means that if you enable SL Linux and you don't do anything else, uh, nothing works. Uh, that's not cool, so you need to do something to make sure that those syscalls that you want uh, to be able to be working, that they are enabled. Um, and yeah, once you start doing that, uh, you will probably lose some functionality because it's very difficult to have an overview uh, of a system of completely everything that's happening on the system and configuring it in a way that uh, everything works uh, the way it should work. And that is where the policy comes in. The policy is a key component uh, in SL Linux. Uh, it is used to def define which objects get access to other objects uh, and in which way. Wow, uh, objects getting access to other objects. Uh, well, the basics of SL Linux is uh, the context label. The context label that is set uh, on items like the file system, uh, like directories, uh, like ports. Uh, and these context labels, uh, context labels uh, they have to match uh, the accessing objects, which means that if your web server wants to access uh, a given file, uh, there's a context label set for the web server and that needs to match uh, the context label that is set for the file. Uh, let me just give you a simple example of what this looks like. I hope this prompt is readable. Is it readable? Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, I just want to do ls minus z. Uh, this gives you uh, an overview of all the context labels that I set in my current directory, uh, which is set to default underscore t, which already reveals that something is not quite okay on this system uh, because it's the uh, home directory of user root. If I do the same thing, ls minus z, minus z is the option that you can use uh, to find out more information about context labels that are set. Uh, you can see, for example, that uh, has, been, uh, has been labeled with uh, bin uh, type. Uh, SRV has been labeled with a var type. USR has been labeled with USR type. Now, if there is a web server, which typically has the HTTP D type, uh, in a rule in the policy, there's a definition that the web server with the HTTPD type can only access a limited amount uh, of specifically labeled files. And there is no way on earth that a web server uh, will be able to access a directory that has TMP type, because that is prevented uh, by the policy. Now an interesting thing is that you can also find out which types are set for processes that are running on your server, uh, like a command like psaux, uh, and again uppercase z. Uh, you can see the context labels that I set for all the processes uh, on the machine. But let's get back to the slide because I only have 20 minutes. So the policy is the key component uh, of SL Linux and in the policy uh, there's a context and the context uh, consists of three different parts which is the user, the role and the type. Uh, depending on the kind of policy that you are going to use, you can either work with all three, the, three of those types or just uh, with uh, the context type which is what we have just seen what you can use to label files. 
Now, in the policy, you will have rules, and the rules, they will uh, define uh, what exactly is possible. And by default, there are many different uh, policies available. If, for example, you look at Red Hat, Red Hat is basically the distribution behind SL Linux nowadays. Uh, Red Hat has different policies. Uh, policies that are very restrictive and that don't allow anything unless it is uh, specifically uh, allowed. Policies that are a little bit less restrictive and that do allow you to run services without protection of SL Linux and even multi-level security policies. Now the policy is also the problem if you are going to work with a distribution that doesn't support SL Linux. Because in the policy you need rules for all files and all processes on your server. Now it took Red Hat a couple of years to write decent policies uh, for their uh, Linux environments. And basically it's only since Red Hat 6 that SE Linux really is perfect on Red Hat. Now if you have a look at a distribution like SUSE, uh, SUSE in their uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 11.2, uh, they have stated that from now on they are supporting uh, SE Linux on the SUSE platform, but they don't deliver any policy. They tell their customers, hey we do SE Linux but we don't have a policy, uh, go figure out for yourself. Now, if you realize that in an average policy you will have at least a couple of thousands of different rules that are working with thousands of different context types, uh, you do realize uh, that tuning a policy is really uh, complicated. So if you want to enable SL Linux on a distribution that doesn't have uh, SL Linux by default, find yourself a policy and go tune it. And that will take uh, a lot of time before you've got it perfect. I have a couple of hints in the remaining slides on what you can do to get a policy for yourself. But first, let's have a look a little bit more about how the policy is uh, working. Uh, the best way of uh, using a policy is by uh, using a modeler policy, uh, which means that like... Uh, Everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that means like uh, a Linux kernel, uh, that there are different modules that you can load and that you can unload, uh, which makes it very easy uh, to work with the policy. Uh, there is uh, a couple of files involved. Uh, the PP file is a compiled policy file, and you can uh, enable them, disable them uh, using the SE module uh, command. I have tried to include all the relevant commands, the most interesting commands in these slides here, and SE module definitely is an interesting one uh, that is going to allow you to enable the functionality that you really need. Uh, related to that, there are also some input files. These are the .te, the .if and the .fc files. Now, if you are interested in seeing how those rules in SL Linux are composed, uh, it's a good idea to have a look at those files. Uh, because if you take some time and if you understand the concept of SL Linux, uh, yeah, they are impressive, but they are not that hard to understand. Uh, they are just humanly readable. Uh, now, managing SL Linux, what do you need to be able to do as a system administrator? Uh, well, first you need to check uh, if it's alive, which means uh, SE status uh, will show you if your system is using SL Linux, yes or no. Uh, this is in particular a very important command if you try to enable SL Linux on a, a, a distribution that doesn't do SL Linux by default. Uh, next, in managing SL Linux, uh, use permissive mode to start from scratch. That may sound like bad practice, but at least if you use permissive mode, that is the mode where SL Linux is fully operational, but it doesn't block anything. In permissive mode, uh, you can analyze what is happening, and at the same time, you still have functionality on your system. Because if you do enable a badly configured SL Linux policy, and uh, you install it, put it in enabled mode, uh, your kernel will probably panic because it can't uh, start the init process or whatever it's starting uh, properly because that's prevented by SL Linux. So if you really want to build it from scratch, starting in permissive mode really is important. 
the next task, because as a system administrator you will frequently do, you will use SE Manage. SE Manage is the flexible command that you can use to, to set context uh, on files, on ports, on whatever uh, y you need to have context on. Uh, then we also have uh, set subool. Uh, SE Linux uses booleans. Uh, and those booleans are a very easy way to change the default behavior uh, of your policy. Uh, let me give an example. There is uh, one boolean that says uh, FTP uh, allow anonymous upload. Uh, by default on FTP, SL Linux doesn't allow anonymous uplo upload. And there's a rule that specifically states that. Now, instead of changing the entire rule, you can just change the boolean uh, by using set se bool, uh, which will actually uh, compile the change into the policy if you use the right option with that. I have another slide that shows a couple of examples with those commands. Then we have uh, se module. se module, we already talked about that. se module is what you can use uh, if some uh, part of the configuration is causing you a headache. Because with se module, you can simply enable or disable se Linux protection uh, for a specific uh, module. Um, also very useful uh, if you are uh, installing your system, if you are configuring it for SL Linux, uh, is to use auditing. Every modern Linux has auditd. Auditd writes audit messages to the audit log. Normally those are uh, humanly uh, nearly unreadable messages. But hey, if you take a couple of minutes, you will understand what they tell. And you will exactly understand what SL Linux is trying to disallow you to do. And next you can use a useful tool, audit to allow Now, what audit to allow is doing is interesting, especially from a security perspective. Because audit to allow uh, reads the denial messages, and uh, you can use audit to allow to turn those denial messages into policies. Uh, policies that will allow the activity that has been denied before. Uh, yeah, that makes that your system will work uh, even with your SL Linux policy, but you should be very careful when using audit to allow because hey, SL Linux is trying to secure your system and you might open your system too much by just uh, using audit to allow without, without understanding uh, what you are doing. Uh, and do not use set enforce to turn it off. Set enforce normally is the only command that system administrators know uh, about SL Linux. It's what you use to, to switch SL Linux to permissive mode, uh, which means that it doesn't protect your system anymore. Uh, I just mentioned just use audit to allow instead. Uh, there's a couple of options that you can uh, that you can use audit uh, to allow with. I'm not going through every single line here in the slide. Just wanted you to have uh, the the useful commands uh, in the slide. Uh, the idea behind audit to allow is the audit to allow minus a uh, minus m command uh, that will create. Uh, an SL Linux policy module, so that's a PP file, and next you can use uh, SE module to uh, to en enable this module. Now, some examples of common administration commands. Uh, basically, if you want to work with SL Linux on an administrator level, that means you have Red Hat, CentOS, Fedora or anything that comes natively with SL Linux. That means you don't have to care about the policy. Basically what you do, uh, you will work with commands like SE Manage. And yes, there are different uh, alternatives for using SE Manage, but SE Manage is the most flexible of all the managing commands. And you will use uh, commands like the first. Uh, now, I know that this is not the type of command that you type easily out of your head, but fortunately, SE Manage has a very good man page, and in the end of the man page, there are examples. And this just comes from the example. Just the only thing you need to do, you need to find out what exactly is the context type that I need. In this example, the context type is HTTPD syscontentity, uh, which is needed to open a directory for a web server. Uh, the challenge that you have is that there's about uh, 3,000 different context types available. So you need to find uh, the appropriate context type. 
Uh, there are different ways of doing that. Uh, use your good friend Google, for example, or just have a look at the default uh, configuration. I mean, every web server on an SL Linux system has a default document route. And if the web server by default works, just check the context type that is set for the default document route, and then you know what you need to do. Uh, or just, just do se info minus t and grab on the output of the command to find which context types are available. Next, when you have set the context type, you need to run restore con because se manage is going to write uh, the context type that you want to use to the policy and you need to apply it. SE restore con minus r uh, is going to do that. In this example, on the directory web and everything uh, that exists in that directory. Now another command, uh, I al already mentioned them, uh, the booleans, getsable and setsable. Uh, getsable minus a shows you all the booleans, booleans that are available. Uh, grab on uh, something like FTP uh, or whatever you need uh, and you will find very easily the boolean that you need uh, exactly. I think I have two minutes left uh, to talk about install on installing SU Linux. Now this is something that you can read in much more detail uh, in the article that I've uh, put on my website. Now basically the, the idea is that uh, you need to enable some kernel options. So what you need is security is SU Linux, SU Linux is one and enforcing is zero. Enforcing is zero puts SU Linux in permissive mode so that you can be sure that it still works. Then you need a policy. Now what I recommend you to do is to download a source file containing the policy sources and compile them uh, yourselves. Um, in order to do that, build.conf is an important configuration file. In the build.conf you tell the SL Linux the, the make command that you want to work with a modular policy. And next you can continue uh, the configuration. Uh, most important part of this is the SL Linux ready script. The SL Linux ready script will check the current configuration on your server and tell you what exactly you are missing. And based on the SL Linux ready script, you are going to execute uh, the other commands that are listed on this slide. In particular, interesting, all this to why. Why is the action that I want to perform on this server uh, denied? All this to why will tell you exactly, and it will tell you exactly what you need to do in order to enable it. Additional questions, I already knew that I was running out of time by the moment that I got to this slide. You are more than welcome uh, to send the additional questions if you have them uh, by email. Uh, I always try to answer uh, short uh, mail messages, but maybe you have time for one or two questions. Yeah, we could have one or two questions while Thomas is setting up. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> well, in that case, I say thank you very much. It's a real pleasure being here in Australia.